Good day everyone. I'm in my little cut flower garden, which is right next to my little, well, rather small veg bed, which I have to keep fenced because of deer and rabbit. Now, these are some of my cut flowers. Look how lovely the uh, apricot colored straw flowers are turning out. So I'm definitely going to collect seeds. So if I can get to my apricot garden next year, look how lovely. And these are a type of annual hibiscus. I love these, which I grow just to cut and use in arrangements, but don't you love that deep purple? But I had extra seedlings of my uh, various pumpkins. I grew both squash to eat, but also ornamental pumpkins. So I stuck a couple in here and look, first of all, it's fitting for the cut flower garden because you could use those flowers, although they wouldn't last very long, but you can also eat those flowers. <laughs> so this borders the little fence between where the veg sits and my little cut flower garden is. And you can see the little pumpkins farming. They're a bit late, but that's because what I found this year is I've kept out the deer and the rabbit, but now the little ground squirrels, little darlings, they come in and eat the leaves off, so or the flowers off, so not many have been able to reach a good height, so hopefully we'll have some. And whilst I'm in the uh, little cut flower garden here, I thought I'd show. Now here's an example of <laughs> utility over beauty. <laughs> I call this the weeping bride. This is my uh, one little self-pollinating pear tree, which I love. It's a little dwarf plant that hubby got for my birthday last year. I'm, I'm sorry, the previous year. So last year I had it planted because um, it went through spring and I didn't have it covered and I thought because it was in the little fence flower garden the fruit would make it, but the small fruit were being eaten by the squirrels. So this year, until I can figure out a way, I want to maybe, maybe I'll transplant it to my fruit cage because um, it was the centerpiece of my little cut garden here. So instead I draped it. This is a type of fish netting that the local oyster fishermen, oyster farmers use to make parts of their boxes to seed the uh, oyster seeds. But for now it's the veil of the uh, <laughs> the weeping bride. But see how lovely, it's a very, very dwarf tree, but all of the pears have been protected all summer long. <laughs> and it looks silly, but at least I can look beyond the utility of the white net and still see the beauty of the sea beyond. And along the uh, funny old border of my cut garden, which is just old picket fence. Oh, and as I've trained the uh, pumpkin along here, and I also have, these are some morning glory vines, but mingled in, of course, is my little nemesis, bittersweet. Look at that. So see how it's found its way up? But you know what? I've decided I, it's here now. I'm going to leave it through autumn because it'll get its lovely bittersweet berries and then I can cut them and then I'll cut it back. But yes, here's a little morning glory, which I planted on purpose. And here's a lovely straw flower, a deeper apricot. -y. This is more of a peachy color, peachy red. That probably won't go into the apricot garden. But these little apricot zinnias, I'll definitely seed save these because those will be good for the flower garden, the apricot colored garden. Look how pretty that apricot color is. And I wanted to do an apricot garden this year, but I just didn't have time because there's always so many tasks and chores to do. So today I'm going to uh, add color to my sketch. And uh, then I have a project I've been wanting to work on um, making over my chicken run. So I think I'm going to steal a couple of panels from my fruit cage and see if I can make a little experiment. I'm not sure how that will work, but... And look at the bees. Love these... Uh, the pumpkin and squash blossoms. But um, yeah, I'm going to steal some panels from my little fruit cage and uh, just put netting over that. And I want to redo my fruit cage as well. So, so today we're going to add some color to my sketch of the uh, Frenchies and the seaweed. And I'm going to try to do a little bit of, uh, see if I can do something with the chicken house. So uh, on with today's video and it's a, a lovely sunny day after last post we had the gray leaden sky and the thick dark clouds but today it's blue sky and it looks to be a rather enjoyable labor day weekend labor day is 
an American holiday, which for us on the East Coast officially marks the end of summer. And as Labor Day closes on Monday, many people will shut up their summer homes and return to wherever they live in the country or the city. And in the old days, we'd put away our white shoes and white clothes because summer would end and the light colors would go away. Actually, let's hop into the fruit cage now and I'll show you the uh, one of the apple varieties I'm pretty happy with. I have a few variety of apple in here and to keep my blueberry and my um, some raspberries in here, but the ground squirrels again have shown me that this needs to be redone. However, the apples which grow up high have been protected. The deer can't get them, obviously apple can't get them, or rabbits can't get them. But this is a Liberty apple, which I had never grown before, but I really love it. And they're kind of a small apple, although I think they're going to be getting big, a little bit bigger. One fell off the other day when I was in here and hubby ate it and said it was sweeter than a store-bought apple and it isn't even ripe yet, so that bodes well. And I believe they are good for storing as well as eating. But here, let me show you. One enjoyable thing in the fruit cage, even though you see there's chicken wire and then more oyster netting, is when we turn this way. The trees and I have a view of the sea. And you can see here some wild asters and things growing up in because I let the, uh, the wildflowers grow along the base. And here's some more apples. Now this one didn't do as well, so I think they were just too close. But my little dwarf peach tree has some lovely fruit on it. I can't wait to eat those delicious fruits. Again, it's not many, but it's a lot when you consider it's one tiny little dwarf tree. So I'm going to be stealing a couple of these panels. And for the chicken run, but I'm not sure if that project is going to work, so I think I'm just going to give it a little try today and see what we can do. So I'll do that and uh, add color to my painting and get on with the day. Out of the fruit cage, onto the oyster net, into the great blue sky of a Labor Day weekend, Cape Cod style. And there goes the neighbor's boat out for an afternoon of geology in the sun and another as well. In fact, this weekend, we've had quite the uh, boats going in and out of our neighbors. And the uh, grandchildren have been out laughing and enjoying swimming off the dock. And if you look out that way, you can see the sailboats out in droves, enjoying the last hurrah of summer before autumn slips its cool breath upon the shore. But I have a confession to make. I, I rather prefer autumn to summer. Spring and autumn are my favorite. And this little hedge of sumac needs to be taken care of this autumn. I need to keep it lower. I want to be able to see over it, but I do love the sumac. It has the most beautiful, uh, it's like a staghorn. So the, uh, in the autumn and the spring, the branches are soft, like new growth on a stag, or a young stag's horns. And it gets beautiful flowers, which are great for uh, autumn flower arrangements. Okay. If I stand here and talk all day, I'll get nothing done. So, sun on the sea and things to do. Let's get to doing. So I intended to do my chicken coop project, but I took out a panel, moved it about, and realized it was more than I wanted to get into today. So back it went.
Inside the studio, let's work on today's sketch. So as I like to do, I often pick a sort of base color. In this case, I'm doing a purpley blue and uh, I will back uh, color or fill in the two dogs in this basic shade. And then I will build up from this base color uh, the details of highs and lows. And of course, I'm just using a base green color for the, um, the sea algae, the dead man's finger or sea staghorn. And then here I'm going in and using, um, obviously I'm not really creating it this fast. I've sped it up quite a bit, but off screen I have a palette open with the base color and then I can eye drop uh, that base color and make various darker and lighter tones of that same purpley blues. And then I, uh, contrapoint that with pinks or greens as well. And this way I can just work on the highs and lows of, of shadow and light. And uh, this way I can kind of basically do uh, the, the second to last bit. <laughs> I consider it almost finished after this. So what I'll do on, uh, probably share them in my next video possibly, is um, now I will go in and outline with inks and then I kind of give it um, an outline in ink. Then I'll decide if I want to bring more color forward or if I want to give it more detail here and there and then I will consider it a finished piece and then I can happily put it on things for prints or on things like wrapping paper or clothing things like that. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the next phase of our funny little Frenchy sketch inspired by the uh, the sea algae we found on our beachcomb last video. Just to interject in today's video just had to stop and admire. If you recall last video how we had heavy gray clouds. I just love when we get the big blue sky and the big pantomime clouds. So perfect. They look like candy floss or big painted beautiful clouds. Aren't they wonderful? And the, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the sound of the, the lines on the sailboat clanging on the mast. A lovely, sunny September day. And the neighbor's grandchildren are out swimming off the docks. Though we're almost at the end of summer, today you can hear the sounds of summer. And the bees are enjoying the seaside lavender. Thank you for joining me for today's video. It's good to be getting back into the swing of things. Now for the rest of this Labor Day weekend, I think I'm going to go out and enjoy the warm summer lawns as the season ends and just enjoy the sound of the laughter of the last of the summer guests before autumn returns to us. And again, thank you for joining me. And remember, stay creative. Cheers. <laughs>